Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm here today to do a little extra explaining about a, a, the pattern, a Laughing Moon Work Tile uh, 135. It's a cape and a cloak. And we're just going to cover the pleating techniques today. This is not uh, going to be a long enough video to do step by step instructions. But there are four different kinds of pleats in this, so I thought seeing it in 3D might be helpful. Um, also, if you have uh, this is not that helpful, I would uh, recommend a Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Sewing. doesn't matter the year. You can find it for a buck or two at the surf shop. It has seven pages on how to do pleating. Also, if you need extra help, I would re uh, recommend the American Sewing Guild. They have tutorials and they have uh, wonderful classes. It's just a great resource. So the first kind of pleating I'm going to be talking about today is cartridge pleating. And this is the kind of pleating that you're going to use to attach the back of the uh, cloak to the neck band. And the reason you do cartridge pleating is you can get a great amount of fabric into a small space. The way you cartridge pleat is you first of all set up your fabric and your lining and you fold it in on themselves. So there's uh, a folded edge here. This isn't the way you do all cartridge pudding. For instance, if you were going to do an 1860 skirt, you would fold it this way. But in any case, for this pattern, this is the way you do it, if you have fabric and a lining. Then you take stitches, and I've done this in black, but your, of course your, your uh, thread should match your fabric, and you take just running stitches, in and out, in and out, and these are done in about a quarter of an inch. And what I've used, this is a, a little bit of a cheat. If you don't think you can do it on your own evenly, you can use something called tire tape. These marks are exactly a fourth of an inch apart, and the tape itself is at a fourth of an inch wide. And here's what it looks like in the package. Quilters use this a lot. So you take these stitches, and I use double thread because I don't want this to break after I've, you know, stitched up 140 or, uh, inches of fabric or whatever it is. And now that I see that my stitches are, are where I want them, I've used two needles here, but you can use, do one and then the other. And you take off your tape. This again, is what it looks like. Just plain straight stitching. Now you, your two rows should be underneath each other, otherwise your pleats will be wonky, which is a technical term. You can see how it looks on the fabric side. Same here, only opposite. So what you do is you take these and you draw them up, just like an accordion. You can see all this fabric going into a very small space. It looks exactly like an accordion, all these fan pleats. What you do then is you tie it off um, and then you're going to stitch it to you or whatever it is you're going to stitch it to, whether it's a waistband or a bodice or whatever. Here's my next little prop to show you. I have actually tied this off so it's not moving, it's not going anywhere, and I'm going to stitch it to a, in our case, a neckband. The reason we have piping is to add uh, security. You're going to have pounds of fabric hanging from this ne neckband, and this piping gives it a little more strength. So you sew like this. Here's the piping on this side. I happen to have green, so it would stand out a little extra. So I used it, but your piping should match your fabric, generally speaking. Then you fold it over and press so that the piping is on the outside. This is the right side of the fabric. Then you take your you take your um, cartridge pleating and you line it up right on the piping. And then you take small little stitches and you actually stitch every single one of those on this side to your piping. These hang free. If after you're done, you can kind of see all my little tiny stitches right here. If after you're done, you pull this up, first of all, look, does not look nice. If you pull this up and it pulls up too much and your little stitches are way down here, all you do is come back over here and stitch closer to where the piping is and then it won't pull up. But that's how you do the cartridge pleating. I'll show you some little tricks about how to know how much to use. 
This is a piece of fabric 18 inches long, both of this. Now I wanted to use this Melton, but it was so thick, it was to be very difficult. First of all, I couldn't fold it over and pleat it because that was just impossible, It'd be way too thick. Excuse me, I'm gonna pick this up. So I did a couple of examples and I, I figured out what I call the multiplier. This will tell you how big or how much to pleat your fabric so it will fit into the allotted space. And this is an example of why you need to do that. First of all, I'll tell you how I did the Melton. I zigzagged it, very close together but very wide. Now this fabric doesn't ravel anyway, but the stitching will make it uh, strong enough so I don't have to fold it over. I can just use the raw edge. This is something you might want to use if you're using damask or velvet, same thing. Because if you're pleating, it's like this. This was done one fourth of an inch apart. Now your samples, you don't have to pleat it in two rows. You can only do one because all you want to do with your sample is measure from here to here. So I measured from there to the, here and I got 4.5 inches from here to here. Now this is a pleating of one quarter of an inch. Now, I'll show you the math I did, and I knew that I couldn't, this would not all fit into this space with this kind of pleating. So I tried another sample, 18 inches, and this time, instead of quarter inch pleats, I used half inch, full half inch. And I got my pleating of 18 inches all the way down to two. So you can see, the length of your pleating stitches makes all the difference in the world on um, whether you're using thin or uh, thick fabric. This is the math, and it's going to be a little complicated. If you hate math, you're going to go, oh my gosh, Joanne, it's a word problem. I just don't feel like it. But um, I'll have this up on Pinterest, and I'll also have it on my website, and you can stop it and, and take a look what I've said. This will work. This math will work for any cartridge pleating that you're doing for any garment. But the bottom line for this garment, if you just want me to get there, is that 18 inches must pleat into four, it says two, but it's four, it's four, no, no, it is, it's two inches. 18 inches must pleat into two inches if you're gonna get the full 120 into this cloak. If it doesn't, your cloak just won't be that full. But I'm just telling you, this is the math. Okay, so that's cartridge pleating. There's another kind of pleating that we're going to do in view A, and that's the, to pleat the hood. So first of all, the first thing you're going to do is you first, we, well, of course, transfer all your markings. And you're going to do this side pleat. This side pleat makes a, a little bit fuller around into a smaller space into the neckband. And it's also present on the excellent garment that I copied. So, here's an, uh, an example. Let's say this is the fabric side. You're going to mark the pleat in a pinch in the middle in the fold and then stitch. Same thing with the lining. Pinch in the middle and stitch. And you're gonna press it towards the front. Now, the original, for whatever reason, the, the pleat on this this pleat in the near the back of the hood is on the right side of the fabric so there's the right side goes forward and on the lining it's on the wrong side now if you're saying I don't care right wrong side do it whatever way you want I would just say keep it consistent so that's the first type of pleat some people might call this a knife pleat second type of pleat on the hood is where we're going to pleat the back of the hood together First, well, you're just going to follow the instructions and you'll eventually get to a piece that looks like this. I'm going to turn this inside out and you're going to line up the fabric and the lining. Sorry. I went a little too uh, overboard there. Here we go. Now, the, what's important to notice here is that this lining is sewn to, its together to, to itself in the back and the fabric is sewn to itself in the back. But there's a hole. 
Now this might, this is one of those things that's going to translate in 3D better than it does on when I'm uh, drawing it. <clears throat> so the first thing you're going to do, this is the front of the hood where you look out, this is the back. You take the center back seam, and I'll just do one side first. And I'm going to pick up my pin cushion, sorry. And you fold where it says fold, you pinch it right there. And you're going to line up the dark marks. And I'm going to pin that. You do the same thing. You're going to pinch on the fold and line up. I just stabbed myself. That's funny. Pinch on the fold. And you've done three pleats on one side. Now, see how that looks? Now, do the same thing here. And you pleat until you have a whorl of pleats. Okay. And I could put one more pleat in here, but what I've done is actually sew this on the machine as a prop just so you can see what it looks like. There are six pleats, three on one side, three on the other, and they all meet in the center. Now the maker of this uh, cloak went, took it one step further. You don't have to, but she did sew a couple of them together. First of all, I have to tell you, sew these clothes by hand. All of these, all six. Then after you're done with that, then you can sew the top two together and the top sides together. It will look like only three pleats. This makes it look just a little bit nicer on the outside. You can skip it if you want, but that's what it looks like on the inside. Here's the top two, here's the top side two. Okay, we're back with view B and C. View B and C, it's a cape. The only difference between them is the hood construction. The view C has the same exact hood as view A, so it's pleated in the back, but I'll show you that. But we're going to go over view B's hood first. This is the same hood that is on my extant garment, and it's a pleated hood, which can, which when it's down, actually looks like a second cape. It's extremely attractive, um, and when up. It frames the face and has a neck ruffle and is very graceful in its folds. Should different fabric for the, for the lining. So let's start with the, the hoods. Now I say hoods because there's a lining and an outside and generally speaking it's made of the same fabric. So that when your hood is down it's the same fabric, but you don't have to do it that way. But first of all I'm going to show you the piece. This is the top of the hood and this is where your face looks out. So all around the bottom, the part that attaches to the cape is pleated. And they're pretty small pleats. And in this case, they're pleated uh, on the outside. So for the hood, you pleat it from the lining side, but for this one, you're gonna pleat, and for the cape, you're gonna pleat on the outside. So you can see I've made black marks. I've transferred my stitching, or excuse me, my um, markings from the pattern piece to the fabric. And I've used black carbon paper that I got in an art store because I know it's going to come off, but you can use whatever method you want. And I will note, uh, say also that this is a bit of a challenge because this, as you can see, this entire piece down here that you're pleating is on the bias. It's on the curve, so it's going to stretch. So to ameliorate, ameliorate that, you can stay stitch it but it's still going to stretch, so you're going to have to just keep an eye on it. After you pleat, you're going to have to measure. Um, it's just something to keep in mind. So, once again, if you're going to pleat, what you do is you pinch it in the middle, you line up the two black lines, and you stitch it. Now, if you're an advanced student, or excuse me, an advanced stitcher, or even an intermediate, you're just going to pin that, and you're going to stitch it. But if this is the first time you've ever pleated or you haven't pleated in a while, you might want to take these extra steps that I'm going to show you. First mark it. Then pleat it. Here's the top. Here's the pleats. 
You can see there's 13 pleats there, so that's an awful lot. And you can see I can push pull on that, see how it stretches and, and comes back together again. So you can see all these pleats, they come out three-dimensionally out away from the fabric. And that's how you're going to do these pleats. And there's a whole lot of them. And I will say that from the dot here to center back, which is 5 eighths inch away from here, it should measure 17 inches. So that's sort of your, your check. Now, I can stretch this so it's 18 or 19. Or I can let it go and it's 17. If it doesn't measure 17, try and figure out what you did. It could be a sewing, a pressing, or a stitching error. If it's too long, simply take a look at your pleats and they might be a little bit too short. A sixteenth of an inch difference translates to an eighth of an inch per pleat, which is times 13, can be a lot of mistake or not matching up. So that's what that looks like. You can easily see it looks completely different on the back side, on the, uh, the wrong side. So that's why I keep em emphasizing to do it on the, on the right side because it will look different depending on the side you do it on. Here's a, uh, an example of the entire hood. Here's where your head goes out. And here's the, plate, the, way, the part that attaches to the cape where I have stitched every single one of these pleats and I've pressed it. They press away from center back, that direction. So this is what your hood is going to look like before you attach it. So let's take a look at the, at the uh, cape body. It's the exact same thing, only fewer pleats, you're saying, thank God. Here it is. This is the center back of the cape. This is the cape, the part that comes around your neck. Once again, you're going to make clearly seen black marks. And these are tiny little pleats. These are only half an inch. So when you pinch these, it's going to be just a tiny little pinch, and you're going to make sure on your stitcher, on your machine, even if your marks aren't one quarter of an inch, you should be stitching it one quarter of an inch. You do the same thing. Here's what it's going to look like when it's when all the pleats are stitched. You see, pinch, 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 pinch. There are six here, two here, and from here. To 5 eighths inch away it should be 17. That's where we get that magic number where the cape uh, hood stitches to the cape. Is it crucial that it lines up? Uh, you know not particularly but it, it'll make your life easier if it does. Now this is a, what it looks like. This is the lining and I've completely stitched this one. Again this is the center back at the neck. This is the center back at the as it hangs down your back. And here's the, all the pleats stitched and pressed away from center back, away from center back. So they go this way and they go that way. So that's, that's it as far as view B and view C, except I will mention once again that view C, you're gonna use the same exact instructions to pleat the back of the, of the hood in view C as you do with the view A. So there's the same six pleats stitched the same way. And split into three, just like that. So that sums it up pretty much for the actual pleating in the garment. But let's talk about the trim. So I'm going to uh, change a few things out and we're going to talk about the pinch pleat trim that it is uh, present on both my extant garments and how I sort of try to duplicate that sort of look. One, two, three. Okay, now we're going to talk about the last um, type of pleating in this, this pattern. It's an advanced technique, I would call it, and it would certainly help if you're OCD, because it takes a long time to do this, and it's the pinch pleat trim that you find on many extant garments from this period. When I first saw it, I was a little bit perplexed, but uh, I narrowed it down, kind of figured it out. The kind of pleating I'm talking about is this, this pinch pleating that you'll see on coat, coat, excuse me, cloaks and capes. And basically what this is, is pinch, stitch, and then a little flat space, pinch, stitch, flat space. There's instructions in the, as a, 
a furlong one in. There's instructions in the pattern, but it's probably a good idea for you to actually see this up close. I'm also going to put really good pictures on Pinterest. And Laughing Moon Mer, Laughing Moon M E R on Pinterest. And I'm going to have all kinds of close-ups um, on my extant garment so you can see exactly what's going on here. What's interesting is that this type of trim is sewn directly to the garment. You can see the stitches because they peeled out. So they didn't sew it and then put it on. They actually pinch pleated it as they went in this garment, which is especially amazing to me because that means they sewed. In some cases, this is only around the hood, but in some cases, all the way around. And then they sewed five or six lines of stitches all the way around by hand. And so it's just an amazing sort of, uh, I, it was boring and it was time consuming, but I think it looks pretty cool. Here's my attempt to, to recreate it. And at first I did the same thing. I stitched right onto the garment and it and see my stitches on the other side. But uh, I wasn't very good at it and I came up with some bald spots. So what I did was I, I pinch pleated the fabric off the garment and then put it on. And then that way it, it wasn't quite so hair raising. Now here's the other type on my other garment and it's done the exact same way. Pinch, flat spot, pinch, flat spot. The difference being is that they only sewed it three times instead of five or six. And they left a nice wide edge here that turned into a ruffle. Once again, they, you can see the stitches plainly on the wrong side. So they apply it directly to the fringe garment. Stitch it, didn't care if the stitches showed. And interestingly enough, I'll just point this out. You can see this is a different fabric. It's not the wrong side of this fabric. And you can see that because here's the fabric. Here's what the wrong side looks like. So they used a different but complementary fabric for the lining. And in this case, they, they did this pinch pleating all the way around the entire garment. And here at the neck, this is more like gathering but it's, two, it's the two-layered neck frill that you'll see in the garment too. This is just gathered. Like, thanks, at least that. So those are the five, four or five different types of pleating that you'll run into in this um, pattern. I hope that seeing it in person will make it just a little bit more uh, easy to do or understand. So thanks very much for watching.